Welcome to Monster Pro. We're proming monsters. There are three of us. Full it's game. Like, it says it's around 90 minutes. It's not. Ah, uh, spooky high school. The sweetest years of our lives. Back then, we were young and unafraid. Sometimes... <laughs> yeah, I have my phone plugged in, so that happened. Sometimes reckless, sometimes brilliant, and sometimes just stupid. But always willing to live life to the fullest. We were on a wild journey to discover who we really were. Was that the storage... What the? So this is me. Um, was this the storage of your phone or your laptop? Yeah, I have my phone plugged in because there's only one other over here and my phone oh, was yeah. dead. Do you so want me to just plug it in over there? Me can um, No, no, it's fine. Okay. I thought your computer okay, was so gonna crash. Who like, do you oh, guys? Shit. No, no. Who do you guys want to be? Because I'll base it around. Those girls are cute. Do you want to explain who these characters are? They're just um the four player characters. Like it doesn't really do anything. We can. I kind of want to be the green guy. You want to be the green one? Yeah. Okay, what are you? Oh, I don't know. There's a Frankenstein girl and then there's a fire girl. There's Audrey Widow, I guess, but I don't know which one to be. You'd be the hot one for once. I was going to say, the fire one is more you, but I do love Vicky, which is the name of the blue one. Aw. I want to, I do oh, she even got the Bride of Frankenstein thing. Oh, do you want to, Do you guys know something really funny? What? You see the green one? Mm -hmm. yeah. He's voiced by um, a Viner. Oh, jeez. Pro ZD. Who? Oh my God! Are Who's you that guy again? Um, he was the fat. He's the like, uh, the like fatter Asian guy with kind of like the critical sounding voice. Ah! Yeah, that's who that is. That's who voiced him. Named so, after two important people, Goku and Naruto. Goku can eat my shorts. Goku was a Super Saiyan! Yeah, that guy! I love him. Perfect. I'm really happy with my choice I'm now. I'm still following him on Tumblr. So am I, actually. I feel like the Frankenstein girl would be more your type, though. Well, this isn't who we're playing as, not who we're dating. Oh! Yeah, this is who we're playing as. I thought this was who we were playing as. I got, I got double mind fucked. Just there. Alright. We didn't plan this out. I didn't realize we got to play as someone. No, I didn't either. I don't even know anything about this. Um, don't worry about it. It's okay. You said the flame girl would be more like me? Yeah, the flame girl is more you, <laughs> but the blue one is rather can we? Can we be a cult? What do you mean? Could we actually just be a cult? Of monster people? I like, mean, kind of. Join our cult. Kind of. No, we gotta do it to them. <laughs> I have to show you a picture of someone who did that carved that into a pumpkin. So, you want to be fire lady or? Hold on. I'm going to do any me. Or rock, paper, scissors, whichever one works. Let's do any me. Any me, any money, mo, catch a tucker by a toe. If it all let go, out goes Y O U. It's the blue girl. Yeah, exactly. We both selected Vicky. Okay. So I'm playing as Vicky, I guess. So this is player one. I'll be player one because I'm the one with the laptop. Yeah. Okay, so you are... I am Oz. Who, this is voiced by Cry, by the way. He's voiced by Cry. Oh! Uh, should I name him Oz or the custom name? Custom, custom name. name. Oh, it's the pronouns. That's nice. Yeah. Jimmy. Get yeah, I'm kidding. We well, can be whatever name you want. I'm Gaman. Okay, we've got Gaman. Okay. Player two. What the? I'll be player two. You're player two? Yeah. Player. Don't it be Brian? I'll just be Piggy with the uh, one instead of uh, I. There. Yeah. Did I just say? Uh. Yeah. I oh. forget. I forget who voices um Vicky. I have we'll no idea what name to stick with. Cloud I'm kidding. <laughs> it, was just, it was so tempting. There. Ah, she will work. That's the one I use the most. Let's go. Let's go. And we had yet to <laughs> experience its ultimate challenge. The monster prom. Oh, no. Kids, kids fall in love. I remember it clearly. Three weeks were left. It, lo and as we <laughs> it the looks like a Dunstan Dragons meetup right there. It really is. And we were all scrambling to catch the attention of one of our six most charismatic classmates. Miranda, Miranda Vanderbilt, 19, a sweet mermaid princess who was as cute as she was genocidal. Oh god. Damien LeVay, 21, a fearless demon with a taste for destruction and a love of fire. <laughs> Scott Howell, a werewolf athlete who compensated for his rather small brain with a stupidly huge heart. Guess who voices Scott? Who? Aaron Hansen. <laughs> of course he did! 
Okay, we have to be a little quieter now. That's why I was being quiet during the nap. Sorry. Alright, who's next? <laughs> Liam DeLion. Oh, bring up the cookies. Oh. He's a hipster. <laughs> Where's giving out our oh. cookies? Oh. Here's the lid. 4XX. This is a vampire, so he's kind of angels. Okay. Leo de Lioncourt, a hipster vampire whose standoffish demeanor hid that he was truly a lovable dork. Yay! Polly Geist, 22? A party ghost with an insatiable hunger for all the wrong things. Mm. And Vera Oberlin, a mean, self made Gorgon with a merciless sense of business. So. These are our options. These are the romance options. Who are you guys gonna go for? I feel like you're gonna go for Scott. I mean, Scott is my favorite, but I want to see what you guys will go for. I'll let her pick first. I pro- you said Vera was my type. Vera's 100% your type. Alright, then I'll try Vera. That Medusa girl? Yeah. Okay. The Gorgon. I kinda want to go for the ghost. Polly? Yeah, I kinda want to go for the ghost. Alright. Hmm, who do I want to go for? Well, I'll just go for your normal? I'll go Liam, actually. Oh, I love Liam. It was clear, it had to be one of them. But who? We only have three weeks to choose our prom date. And even more daunting, we only had three weeks to woo them and conquer their heart. But as I already said, we were young and unafraid, and we were ready to start. Welcome to Monster Prom's stupid pop quiz ever! All minds are rotten, but they are rotten in so many different ways. Worry no more. We're using our PhD in bullshit to diagnose which kind of deviant sicko you are. <laughs> oh! Monster Prom's stupidest quiz ever, TM. We'll throw a bunch of absurd questions at you and turn your answers into your character stats. This way, oh. each of you will start by having stats that better reflect your true selves. Oh, no. Let's start. Team Wolf! You build a hundred foot statue commemorating an event that is so. so that in a, a thousand years, archaeologists can learn something about the people over time. What does the statue represent? So, these are the three options for us. Your least favorite political figure being devoured by a rabid rhinoceri, which is also covered in badass tattoos. The mind-blowing twist in your favorite TV show that clearly changed the life of everyone forever, unlike that boring stuff they show on the news. That glorious instant when your friend stopped you from texting embarrassing stuff to your ex while hella drunk. Well, this is you. I was like, well, that one's actually happened. <laughs> that one's me, and that was also me. God, I am the only Just one because that one's only happen actually happened, I'm gonna go with that. I'm really one of the nerds. Uh, I'm gonna pick the middle one. This one? Yeah. TV show? Yeah. What Sorry. was yours? What was your moment in a TV show? Oh, shit. I never thought that through. I just knew that would be something I would do. I say, it was Give me a minute. It sounds like <laughs> you I think would think of do yourself. Too, because, um, Pink Diamond. My, my god. So, who would you be? I mean, it would be really cool get seeing this badass rhino destroy T Rump. You want badass rhino? Uh, sure. I can't think of it. You're elected president for a day. What's the first law you pass? One dollar bills will now include a picture of me and the inscription "Beware, too much awesomeness." My presidency might last a day, but my fame will last forever. You can deduct taxes by writing sonnets instead. Amount of taxes are deducted and calculated based on the beauty of the sonnets. Trivia fact, presidents don't pass laws. So is this a trick question or are you just being an idiot? So this is me. Hmm. Gotta admit. Look at the language on that. It smells fresh, Bill. <laughs> Gotta admit, I would do this. Or is that a butt? <laughs> it's an ass. I think I would actually go for number three. What about you? <laughs> I kind of want to just do number one again because that'd be funny. That we're all different? So charming. What would be a killer accessory? A fabulous purse made from the skin from your worst enemy. Shiny armor. Brass knuckles. Cool unless yourself. A necklace with your own name, in case you forget. Sunglasses. At night. <laughs> Actually, I'm light sensitive, so sometimes like when I'm out like on the road or something, not that I drive, but if I'm out on the road, 
the traffic lights can actually hurt my eyes. So sometimes I wear sunglasses at night. So I feel all the. I say that sounds like something you would do regardless. Yeah. Shiny armor. Necklace. Huh. Hmm. Weird. The sunglasses one kind of seemed Liam. Wait, did that just show which person oh, we right. Alright, what are you gonna do? I'm gonna go to class. That day, you listen to your elders and learn valuable lessons. Sometimes, after all the monster nonsense and the dating gimmicks, you forget that attending class is supposed to be the primary activity at this high school. I gained plus two smarts. That night, you hit the clubs of Vera and Polly. Thank Satan for fake IDs, but why? What does Ron away? Look at them! Oh, oh God! Good. Drinks are on me. By which I mean drinks are on that guy. <sighs> no need, Polly. I'm into this crazy new thing called paying for my own drinks. drinks. Maybe, Maybe you've heard of it? Mm -hmm. Maybe? Is that French for my boobs aren't big enough to get me free drinks? <laughs> Listen here, you! Feminism is dead <laughs> and you killed it. That sounds like a reason to drink BRB! But oh. soon. Oh. It, it didn't work? What was yeah. that you said? It sounded like Portuguese. Okay, so shame my shameless <laughs> pandering didn't you get any free drinks. drinks. Yeah! This is quickly getting out of control. Maybe you find a way to make that guy pay for your drinks. You can fix this. Man, this is not. This <laughs> is it's crumb time! It's party time. Sedate the guy when he's in the bathroom. Put a pair of sunglasses on him and pretend he's your pal. It's crime time. Steal the guy's wallet, learn his address, then go to his house, kidnap his daughter, and demand drinks from him as ransom. This one. By using your skills as a pickpocket and a kidnapper, I execute my brilliant plan. And people said high school wouldn't adequately prepare you for the real world. Your target, whose name is Dale, by the way, just so you know who you heard, is so worried for his daughter that he buys you the whole bar. Woo, I know my tits were unstoppable, they just need some time to work. That's your girl, Peggy! Quiet, Polly, I need to concentrate on all this cocaine and <laughs> This is a night you'll never forget. My yeah, heart is really the funny. The real treasure is the times you shared and the lives you ruined. I gained money. Um, it's, sure. What are you doing? It's really funny because some of the people in D&D think I will end up with a girl like that. It's so funny. I mean, probably. My girl's doing cocaine. Okay. So, so you can't so go to class. So I can't go to class. Because I went to class, but you can go anywhere else. I will tell you a fact. This is a high school, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Most of the high school, my high school years took place in the bathroom, so I'll go to the bathroom. You're going to the bathrooms? That day you skip class and just hang out in the bathrooms because you respect no authority. I guess some people just want to watch the world burn by skipping class and hanging out in the bathrooms. You get zero shits, but you gain plus two boldness. Ah. After that, you engage in a deadly match of truth or dare or death with Polly. Oh, cool. that that's who you want! Okay. And that would be a super interesting event to cover. But then the two of you spot Miranda and Liam deep in an intense conversation, and that's bound to be much more interesting. Hey, babes, you were making quite a noise, and I love anything that makes quite a noise. What's up? Man, we can't. Well, we don't is, that, is that Vampire Guy the person you're going for? Yeah, I was going for Liam. Also, oh, um, her bra is sticking out. Yeah, it's like that. And you can't see her face. Hey, you two, Miranda and I were having a creative disagreement. You see, we wanted to start our own school club. You know, an intellectually rewarding extracurricular that enriches our minds, while probably not being mentioned ever again in the future, because community at the school seems to be a bit random. Noise, let's do it. Y'all know my fave things in the world. Drugs, mm -hmm. sexual activities, noise. <laughs> no, dummies, that too, but I meant chess and Russian literature. Stop treating me as if I was two-dimensional. Let's start a literature club. Oh no! No! What? Huh, what? I'm not sure. Do you remember what happened last year when we joined the literature club? We wrote dope poems and made new friends. No, the other thing. What? Ah, fuck yeah, that's right. So weird. I almost forgot. I mean, that's how I died, you know. Wait, what? I'm so. What? Cool. Is that is that Sayori? What? She made massive knockers. I think. What? What I'm are you guys talking scared. about? Don't worry hey, about it. The thing is, Miranda and I were already between two ideas. I proposed we start the club club. A delightful meta club where we enjoyed ourselves by designing and crafting new school clubs. Boring. I proposed the Little Pony Sweet Dreams Club, a club where we would spend our nights learning how to tell the right bedtime stories to ponies. Whoa, you two really know how to sound two dimensional. But in any case, can't you both just do your own clubs? No, our lives are fueled by the conflict and confrontation that can only be solved by choosing two different options. That's why we need you to choose which club is the best one. Because Piggy always seems to choose based on what, on who he wants to ask as a prop. So which one should we go for? Just remember, one of the ideas includes ponies. Hmm, a 
tough choice. Must be because I'm like super drunk right now. <coughs> tough choice indeed. It's your opportunity to convince Polly of one of the options because no one is preventing you from making choices based on who you want to ask to prom. Okay, so how does this work? I'm. You just pick whatever one you want. Okay, I mean the pony one sounds. Pony one is at night, so it technically counts as a nightclub. The best club is clearly the club club because then. Just throw some confetti. That's actually something I would have made up in high school too. The club club? Yeah. You want to answer the club club? Oh, yeah, you would do that. I'll do it right back. Uh, club club. You search for your secret stash of colorful, happy confetti that you carry with you when you want to cheer people up. But you accidentally grab and throw your other st stash of confetti, the stash of black and white sad confetti you reserve for more solemn occasions. <sighs> oh. Ooh, not cool. They threw black and white sad confetti at my funeral. That not too good? I'm not in the mood anymore. Polly out. I'm just disappointed. That not too good? I didn't hear it. Defended Liam's option. Mm -hmm. Farewell. But I'm disappointed because you thought confetti was a valid argument to defend an idea with. I do not feel the need to explain why that was stupid. Bye. Did I do bad? I mean, you got hearts with Liam, so... What? So everyone's a critic now. Great. The lesson here is you really need to be careful with using your stash of black and white sad confetti. Still, you lose smarts and fun. Okay. Let's go. Where are you going? Mm. I'm just Outside, the judge. that's where I always went in school. Outdoors. What if I different? You went to class, I went to the John. In a day or a recess, you start a half hour rate that goes full crazy. Nice. You have no idea how it escalates so much. But at one point, there are like 300 people. Someone summons demons from a nightmare dimension, the consequences might distort the fabric of reality itself. But who what? cares? It's a rad party. You gain fun. What? Scott and Miranda seem to be arguing about something. You sweet med mediation skills are clearly needed. Now, I know our football team is called the Spooky High Spooky Monsters Who Spook, but who also play sports, but who's our mascot? Our mascot? Oh dang, you're right, we don't have one. Oh, what about Misha the Mermaid? Mermaids are monsters? No way, too girly, try this, Wally the Werewolf. Oh no. Why is it gotta be a werewolf? We're the monsters, not the werewolves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, we're not the mermaids either. Hmm, maybe the problem is that the team name is trying to cover a huge diverse group of people with a single label? No, coach is never wrong, we're just not thinking hard enough. Think, think, think. Amen. Hey, you, you look like a hard thinker. What mascot should That was definitely team? Aaron's voice. Easy. We'll genetically engineer a cross between every kind of monster in the school. So Frank a werewolf, died. tail of a mermaid, hair of a medusa, angst of a vampire. We'll call it Abe the Abomination. Just find a regular human, dress him up in a business suit, and make him the CEO of a Fortune 500 company. Corporate greed, that's the real monster. Oh no. I know which one I'd pick. Which one would you pick? I picked the first one because I, I actually like the funny. I thoughts. think that's some, I feel like that's something that would probably get to both of them. The Abe the Abomination. You wanna do this one? Oh boy, let's try, let's go for it. Finally, an idea that represents the true diversity of the school. We can use Daddy's gene lab. Let's see, in order to fit all the monster parts in, the mascot would have to be about 100 feet tall, covered in nightmares, appendages, and moist tentacles, which means it shall provide great shade on hot game days. The tentacles can hold umbrellas. Huzzah! Yeah, because deadly genetic experiments are always the shortcut to a girl's heart. You gain smarts and boldness. <laughs> Let's trade places. Oh, this is fun. Mm -hmm. Everybody chooses something bad. Say your choice out loud to the rest of the players. Something bad? Yeah. Well... So how does this work? Just say what you selected. Well, I picked Abe the Abomination. I picked tomatoes. I picked confetti. <laughs> Sadness confetti. Alright. Player orders decide based on how badass a criminal called Mike the Selected Thing Johnson would be. Start debating now. So there's Mike the Abe the Abomination Johnson, Mike the Confetti Johnson, and Mike the Tomato <laughs> Johnson. I like Mike the Tomato. I kind of like that too, yeah. So now what? Is... I think Confetti Johnson's funny. <laughs> yeah, because Abe the Abomination doesn't really work. Alright. So did we go? Did we, we do good? Yeah. I said we can't do this all night, but I'm going to Liam. I'm going to Liam. When you arrive at their table, you find that Polly and Liam are eating. They're just taking pictures of their food. Hey, 
Welcome to the Don't Need to Eat, so we just take dope food pics now, baby. We believe that food, like children, should be seen and not tasted. <laughs> yeah, I mean, have you ever tasted a baby? Have you? I don't know, maybe. My weekends are usually kind of a blur. Like last Saturday. There will be plenty of time to chronicle your sex exploits later, Polly. Right now, we you're need to dating these food pics. Yeah, you're dating a drunk slut. I'm sorry, Piggy. <laughs> While Liam and Polly are busy bantering, you are busily arranging a dope food pic of your own. And to complete your masterpiece, a food pic, but instead of food, it's just a bottle of whiskey with ketchup on it. A food pic of Liam taking a food pic. It's so meta. Well, which is you? Well, you don't like ketchup. I also can't eat ketchup, so this one. Yeah, it's good. You level your phone at Liam, and it just as he's about to snap a food pic, but his vampire reflexes are too quick for you. Ha! Huh. Trying to out-meta the Meta Master, are you? We'll see about that. Liam levels his phone at Polly, just as she's about to take a food pic. Now you're taking a food pic of a food pic of a food pic. Whoa, are we pointing our phones at each other now? I want to play too! Suddenly, Polly's got her phone pointed at you. It's a food pick of a food pick of a food pick of a- We've done it! We've created the meta triangle! The most meta shape in existence! This is our finest hour! The world around you dissolves into green columns of numbers and letters. Yeah. You've done it! You can see the code! You are the one! God damn it! The programming of the video game you are in rewards you by raising your friendship points with the character known as Leanne. Um, sure. You want to go to Polly? Yeah. I, you can't because Polly and Liam are oh, the same. Oh damn it! Um, so what are my options? Um, you can go to the Coven. You can go to Vera and Miranda. You can go to these three, and you What's... can go to the shopkeep. What's the Coven? The Coven? Yeah. What three is witches. it? Three witches. Three witches. And they're emo. What do they do? I don't know. They're just kind of there. Um, they're. I think you can. Uh, they're a secret romance, but I don't know if I've been able to unlock them yet. Because I think you have to get certain other ones, maybe? I don't know. Fuck the witches. Let's go to Coven? Yeah. You were planning Whoa. to sit by yourself today, but the only table you can find is partly taken by the Coven. You do feel kind of sorry for them. After all, nobody seems to want to sit with them. We are here to save the day. Oh good, it's you. We can practice one of our spells on you. Okay. And this is probably why. Oh, don't look so worried. We're preparing for an upcoming battle with the disgruntled Lord of the Seventh Circle. I'm interested. And if we don't do all of our homework, we'll have a hell of a time beating him. The audience laughs. Wait, audience? Anyway, we've got two spells we've been meaning to try out. Magical enhancements to help us beat the big bad. Do you think we could try one on you? Pretty, pretty, please? Aww, says the audience. You know, a magical enhancement doesn't sound half bad. You can choose either of the two options. The spell that lets you see the future, and also the past, and the present. And you can watch live TV anywhere. Now nah, you want to go for something a bit different. Let's do a spell that turns you into two helicopters. I kind of like the idea of the future. I really like that. You want it? Yes. The choice is made. Broadbandium maximum. Suddenly you can see everything. <gasps> everything. You can see how the world will end. You can see how the world began. You can see your parents having sex. Even oh. You totally don't want to. What's uh, more? You can watch every single episode of Where Weasel Weasel Detective at once! Hello, are you still alive? Lunch is ending. We're going to study for the test next period. You probably should too. Who needs to study? You literally know everything already. You gain plus four smarts. And an entirely different perspective on your parents. Let's go. Do you want to know what's really funny? I think my character is a zombie. Yeah, he is. And a it's really funny that I got more brain power. Yeah, I'm going to Vera. Vera is about to lift a glass of scotch to her immaculately painted lips. You can drink from whatever at you can drink whatever at the school apparently. When Miranda screams, "Stop! Don't drink that!" Why not? This scotch costs more than most cars. Has your taster tried it yet? What taster? You don't have a taster? What if your drink is poisoned by somebody jealous of your good looks and royal title? Listen, Miri, I only drink four things. Scotch, red wine, the tears of my enemies, and straight up poison. Did you say that one time? I swear you said that one time. You drink poison on purpose? Miranda, my hair is venomous snakes. You think poison actually harms me? Well, well you should still have a taster. What if somebody puts really spicy hot sauce in your drink? Or poison? Ugh, what do I have to do to get you to drop this? Simple. Hire a taster. Look at them hips. Fine. Any volunteers? <laughs> Vicky Switch walks up and Shally raises her one hand. Like, I'm here. This might be the big break you've been looking for. You raise your hand and when Vera picks you, you 
Drink all her scotch, enraging Vera and delighting Miranda. Pretend to be poison, terrifying Miranda. I'm gonna pretend to be poison. You <laughs> shoot Vera awake, take the tiniest sip of her scotch. Look at her face! No, no, stop voting! How will you be able to taste her poison if you're too busy foaming at the mouth and the, vomiting? The best part is you're a Frankenstein girl. You could literally just rip off your arm like, Ah, it's dissolving me! <laughs> you fool, she's poisoned. Run and tell the authorities before this poor Seth's face melts off or something. Ah, you could literally take off yeah. your face. I'm no good in crisis situations. Curse my uniformly pleasant childhood. Miranda fates with the utmost drama. If there's one thing princesses are good at, it's, it's fainting. fainting. <laughs> that was hilarious. I should put poison in my scotch more often. You can stop vomiting now, by the way. She passed out. Oh, do you need the antidote? All right, here you go. I guess I should have let you know the scotch was actually poisoned. Oh, well. How about we get ice cream to make up for it? Yes, please. Your stomach's still too weak for the ice cream. But you're never too sick to go spend some quality time with Vera. Yay! Let's trade places. Okay. Choose food. Any specific type of food? Just food. Chicken. <laughs> we'll pick a brownie. I'm gonna pick a potato. All right. There's Player one. orders decided by how powerful an energy drink whose key ingredient is the selected food would be. Okay. I think chicken would be the most powerful. Chicken, brownie, and potato. Well, there already isn't well, it would be, an energy drink. I There's think it would chicken. go chicken, potato, brownie. Well, like... Or yeah, potato, but brownie, about, chicken. Yeah, and the thing about chicken is that like they can eat like, broth. Right! That's literally what broth is. So, so it's an energy drink. I, I mean, broth isn't an energy drink, but it's in like a lot of everything. Well, so. yeah. technically... The the brownie would give them energy because it's all like ah, ah, sugar, sugar, sugar. Can I undo? What does that actually determine? Just player order. Oh, and it's just for fun. Um, sure. Where you want to go? There's Pro Where do I want to go? If you want to get Why is there a little icon? At class? Yeah. That's where the shopkeep is. What does the shopkeeper gonna do? Sell you stuff. She's the shopkeep. I'll She's go also... there because she... you are? Okay. Oh, uh, I'll tell you later. Just wait. No. What? What is it? What does she do? Sell you stuff. She's no, like, the shopkeep. You said she does something else. Um. She does have a secret romance, but I haven't romanced everybody, so I can't get her Oh, yet. okay. Um... <laughs> I kind of want to go to the bathroom again. Want to go to the bathrooms again? Why the hell not? That day you skip class, intending to spend the term in the bathrooms. But you encounter three wild hyenas on the way there. Who the fuck runs security here? Anyway, you subdue them with the help of a hair comb. God bless the Monster Scouts and all the idiotic scenarios they've prepared you for. By the time you get to the bathrooms, you've totally gained plus two boldness. You're bored of doodling in your notebook when Damien suddenly appears. Yeah! The fuck is this doodle? Is that me? Mm -hmm. Am I going like shirtless with Leo? <laughs> <laughs> oh, as soon as he said doodling, I'm like, I know what cutscene this is. Scared Piggy. Uh, yes, he did. What? Dude, if you were looking for a shortcut to the morgue, this is your lucky day. Give me one good reason not to cuddle your face on my fists. Oh no, they discovered your erotic fan art of them. You can't think of any way to calm the both of them. But maybe the right answer can calm down one of them. The fuck is this? This fucker in your Damien is art I present to you? Yowie. Don't be silly, you don't want to fight me. You're clearly fighting against your urge for cuddling. That would be me. That second one would be me. Then you start so tickling Damien. Okay, that's it. In the end, it seems he actually did want to fight you, and so he did. You need to check your people skills, and also some of your ribs, which are probably broken. You lose boldness and charm. Let's go. I'm, I'm fine with that. I was already outside, but where is Vera most likely to be? <sighs> hmm. That's a good question. Um. Uh, Torium? No, Scott. That's Scott. Because that's the gym, so that'd be. So oh, why do they have a gym? Oh wait, no. Auditorium is the drama room, which maybe. Um. Outdoors. No, I'd say probably the auditorium because class is the shopkeep. All right. Oh, I look so cute. That day, while rehearsing for the class play, it's as though the music de cells have decided to give you figurative oral sex. Nice. Your performance is intense and inspiring. It will be remembered for generations, which is pretty rad by high school play standards. You gain creativity. 
You notice Vera is showing off an elaborate new necklace to Miranda. They're oh, like around hello. Oh, oh, she's Daisy! <laughs> Miranda's Daisy! My family acquired them in a cutthroat business merger. Do you like, like them? Oh, like yes, very much. It's such a shame about the Lemurian royal family, though. What, they're all dead at the hands of their own servants? No, no, that was unavoidable once the true tragedy had taken place. They were no longer loved by their subjects. Fear, do you mean? Oh, no, fear is so scary. Love is what matters. I could not disagree more. You there, settle this dispute for us. What is the best way to let people know how powerful you are? Buy their houses, burn them down, and replace them with a water park. You don't need to convince anybody. Just make everyone who doesn't love you disappear. Uh, which one will appease her? Vera? Yeah. Definitely buy their houses, burn them. I say the water power sounds like something Miranda would do, though. Well, yeah, but she said, like, the love thing. Yeah, let's stick with the first one. She looks so annoyed, oh my god. Water parks? Do you mean to say that you land dwellers have been stealing massive quantities of our sovereign water? Yes. Merely for your amusement? This explains why the, my uncle, the Archduke, was recently assassinated <gasps> by the ambassador from the sea. Whoa! <laughs> Shame on you, water thief! Off with your head! You make a hasty escape before Miranda can summon her guards. You lose smarts and fun. But you oh gain hearts with Vera, so that's okay. <laughs> Vicky's running away. <laughs> Actually, I've got money. I'm gonna go to the shopkeep. Give me your money. Okay, so- Is that a caddy from Undertale? Kind of. But look at- look at the shopkeep? What if I told you? That's Vera's sister. <gasps> what? Yeah. No. Vera's sister is a shopkeep. Oh, you missed me and my shit, huh? Don't worry no more. All this shit can be yours if you have the money. Not me, though. I can buy a dead body, a motivational poster, sexy fake Latin accent, a Russian novel with an insightful approach to universal matters. That as bloody as tampon. A, pra a PR agent. Cocaine. A tampon used by the former prom queen. A fake badass tattoo. An erotic fanfic about dragons. Some impractical yet kind of funny glasses. A penguin mask, and a blanket with two holes. I realize the, the coke one would definitely work for Vera. Cocaine? Yeah. Because I know what this event is, I'm gonna get this. Catch you later. That we can- Oh, these are spicy. Something happened oh, no. to you! Oh no, what's happening to me? Sure. That weekend, Vera invites you and some friends to an abandoned warehouse to help kill a dude. You wouldn't miss it for the world. When you get there, you find Miranda and Damien there, too. Also a naked fish man tied to a chair. What? I'm so glad you can make it. We're going to execute this fish man for the crimes he's committed against us. We are indeed. Do you know this fish attempted to express a controversial opinion about my father? And he cut in front of me in line at the pharmacy. And I'm sure he did something to me, too. Let's kill him. Now hold on there, Damien. We can't just kill the son of a bitch. This is an execution. We have to make an example of him. Personally, I'm a big fan of quantity over quality. Why don't we just kill his family? We already did that. Why do you think he was saying such treasonous things in the first place? Miranda's right. We need to do something truly extravagant to this upstart. Alright, I'm cool with that as long as you guys are paying. Oh, we're not paying. That's what Piggy's here for. Hold on, you're not spending your hard earned cash on this. Luckily, you've got a super rich friend who. You'll have to take advantage of an emergencies. Okay, so... Clyde is the natural choice. She sends money just to keep from drowning in it. Let's bring in Gene in. He's so rich, he can actually afford to eat organic food. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna help you out with your woman and bring you in, Cloud. Okay. Might I have apple juice? Good old Cloud, always willing to pitch in a few bucks towards a good execution. With their financial backing, you were able to purchase a top-of-the-line offering from LuxuryMurderContraptions.biz. <gasps> that meat reaver 20XX! It's so beautiful! Damien, stop drooling. Your saliva will melt a hole in the floor and I'll lose the security deposit on the warehouse. The meat reaver 20XS looks like a cross between a lawnmower, a beehive, a volcano, a repeating crossbow, and 50 gallons of whole milk. <laughs> Damien, sweetie, we all know how much you love murder, but all this excitement is unseemly. You think I'm this excited because of a murder? This is the Meat Reaver 20XX, the only murder contraption that also makes a perfect cappuccino. You all settle down for a lovely evening of hot drinks and death. Of course, you'd be a bad friend if you didn't let Cloud join in. You each get creativity and boldness. High five. Let's trade places. Something cool. So they choose something cool to say, your choice, then... Ice. Ice age. Yeet. 
I don't care. Your choice is E. No. <laughs> I can't think of anything, so just E. Your choice is E. How cool it would be if 100 years from now, human built a 200-foot statue commemorating ice, ice, the Ice Age movies. No, I meant just the Ice Age. <laughs> the Ice Age movies. <laughs> or the this bitch empty cookie vine. I, I mean, are these ice sculptures? I don't know. I say for this we should say they are sculptures of ice. Like ice sculptures? Yes. Yeah, okay. Well, technically you should go first because yours are literally made out of it. Yeah. I think my next and then hers. Yeah, I'm going to it. Bing, bang, bang. Oh, right. oh, what right. is um, your character actually? I don't know. I'm not going to the bathroom. I don't want to go to that shopkeep. <laughs> See, I'm trying to your character is a, that you want is a sexed up drunk lady. <laughs> that day, your teacher delivers an amazing and creative performance that blows all your minds. It ends up being a sensation on YouTube. Good. Your teacher gains two, ten coolness, but who cares? He's not trying to romance your classmates. Or is he? We hope not. <coughs> he wants again plus two smarts. Hooray! Ah, ah. You're wandering down the hallway, reading Dragon Heat as discreetly as you can, which apparently isn't very, because Polly and Vera clock this immediately. Why? Ugh, are you actually reading erotic fanfiction about dragons? Because yeah. we love Dragon Heat. I'm all about 19th century Russian literature, but I'm a ghost but can but a ghost girl can't say no to some erotic fanfic, am I right? Last I mean, time, she has nothing to lose. Last time I got this, this was Liam and Vera. I'm very disappointed. I've this literally been working on my Morgana von Breastr Breastrich cosplay all week. Don't uh, worry about that. Breastrich? Speaking, speak for yourself, Polly. I don't, I've never, okay, fine, I may have read Dragon Reed. But just don't go around telling people. We're clearly safe with him. A fellow Dracophile can always be <laughs> Are you sure? I mean, anyone into Dragon Heat must have a wicked mind. In 297 chapters and counting, and still manages to amaze me with all new levels of wrong. Yeah, right? I fucking love it. Yet I must admit, I'm a bit vanilla when it comes to fave chapters. Mine is the one where Harold Tonger, <laughs> Horus the Hydra, and the Durang Draco Delacorte have to arrest in an inn. And after the choking bay adventure, only to discover that they have just one available bed. There's only one bed. The classic fanfic trick that never fails. Yeah, that one was good. I personally prefer the one where Vanessa Sarah unmasks her masked savior as after a passionate kiss, only to discover it's herself, and then they bang. I'm not a fan of time travel, but sign me up for some good self says. This is just sending. Amen. What about you, G Man? Or, I'm sorry, G Man. What's your favorite story arc? Nothing to worry about. You'll just review. You'll just be reviewing your, your case to us. <laughs> <laughs> Easy. The Sex Caliber arc, where they discover the chosen one who can control the mythical Sex Caliber dildo, and they have a super orgy so everyone can have the turn of the dildo. What about this exclusive chapter I've written myself? I like how so far you keep getting with our, the ones we're trying to date. <laughs> Come to this, I'm a bitch. I mean, I want Liam, that's why I went to class. And I keep getting him. <laughs> I'm on the floor. I gotta admit, this one's about dildos, which means it's more me. Whoa, so, right? How can we forget about the six caliber arc? With 297 chapters, it's rather easy to forget some arcs. Yeah, but that one was epic. The tension and thrill of wondering who would be the chosen one each time somebody used them. Mm. I must admit, it was very lubricating. Did um, they have to pull the dick out and like, I have the power and it's going right in me. Going up your Also, own. I should praise the fact that it was written entirely from the viewpoint of the video. <laughs> who would have thought? Command here is such a kinky deviant. Maybe I should do, maybe we should do our own sex calendar trial one day, huh? Well, let's not get ahead of ourselves here. Yes, but I might or might not have an official sex caliber dildo myself. It's hard to say no to dragon dildos. <laughs> Fuck yeah. All those years of insecurity and it turns out that a rock dragon fanfics were the ultimate icebreaker. Here, have smarts and fun to celebrate your unexpected discovery. Um, sure. Well, yes, I can't talk to Vera because she was in the classroom. That's not true. Outdoors. Oh, you're going outside? Yeah. That thing's only lunch without a place. It's the usually the one that you have like the more hurts with is who it's gonna oh. lead you towards, which I think for Vera is you. 
that didn't really do it because you start a half hour rave that goes full crazy. At one point, Juan, the small magical Latino cat, slips on a banana peel. You start to laugh at him. He asks you to stop, but you don't. You laugh so hard at him that you somehow steal too fun from him. Hooray! Poor Juan. I love Juan. Looking around, you see Damien and Liam arguing about whether black metal is better than death metal. What? <laughs> Suddenly, Damien stops arguing and sniffs the air. It's funny because this is an actual conversation I've had with somebody. Mm. Shut up. Do you smell that? Yeah, it smells like Christian Dior and Plar. Ah, fuck. Prepare to it's die. me, dickheads, and I brought enough crucifixes and holy water for the whole class. What the fuck is that? Monster Slayer. Oh, lucky me. I have a meeting to finish my take-home final for AP murder. Go ahead, just try to kill me. I'm the protagonist, bitch. She's right, unfortunately. This is a well-trod territory. We are, as they say, pretty fucked. Screw that, you've got a way to save Demi Damien and Leo without killing anybody. All you have to do is bring everyone to tears with a mind-shattering guitar solo or throw a brick at her head. <laughs> you, you don't know how tempted I am. You don't know how tempted I am. I can't believe I... you never get to talk to Polly. Okay, so I have to do this without anybody getting hurt. No, without killing anybody. Ah, uh, fuck. Fuck, fuck, fuck. I've gotten this event before, and neither, neither are lethal. Lethal, not lethal. What does throwing the brick do? I need to know oh, this. You want to go with the brick? No, what does it do? I need to know. I mean, you just throw a brick at her head. I mean, it's kind of self-explanatory. Oh, fuck it, I'm throwing a brick. You throw the brick at her head. You pull your emergency brick out of your backpack and chuck it at the Slayer's head. Ow, my consciousness! Of course, plot armor prevents the Slayer from being killed, but allows her to be knocked out when she's being an asshole. I just like the part where the brick hit her head. The three of you work together to drag her to the bathrooms and put her head in the toilet. That's a funny experience. You gain fun and charm. Let's go. Okay. Go. Barbara wants to go to the library, but I don't know where the hell there would be. I can't, I'm just doing this like, which one's gonna get to me, the girl? I'm gonna be honest. Yeah. She's in the library quite a bit. All right. I just, because that's another place. I bet that you spent some time on the library's PCs, mining some bitcoins. This is supposed to have something to do with solving algorithms and the rise of cryptocurrency, but you guess that nobody actually has any fucking idea how it really works. Well, okay. Anyway, you gain plus two bitcoins, which is equal to two million dollars, which unfortunately is equal to two monster dollars, so plus two money. Later, you, Vera, and Miranda meet, meet to prepare your case for ruthless rhetoric class, your scenario for the week. Monsters finally rule the world, but puny humans still demand equal rights. How will you deal with such audacity? <laughs> 14 hour workday, media censorship, start a fictional war. Ugh, that sounds like so much work. Can't we just throw money at them? <laughs> oh, or cake. I heard if you let them eat cake, they calm down. Oh! <laughs> yeah. What about you? Do you have any ideas? You're not one of those group members who just lets everyone else do the work, are you? Just remember the three R's. Relocation, re-education, reintegration. Problem is that they're not happy, so let's repress them to happiness. Uh, which one would she like more? I'm gonna be honest. Yeah. I've gotten this because I've played it with my friend and I wanted and I romanced Miranda. Yeah. Miranda, funnily enough, she likes the three R's, so if you wanna go for Vera, repress them. Okay. I think oh, let's see. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I like that. We can flood the markets of mind altering prescription drugs and we can set up mandatory joy camps and rove and roving fun squads and joy scouts. We'll start by adding drugs to the cheeseburgers, which we'll give away for free. No one can resist free burgers. I need to present this to the NSA. Perhaps we can work out a partnership deal. Next morning, you see Vera and Miranda hanging out Xanax burgers. Never has a single burger made you so happy. You gain fun. All right. Sa man, I get to try out Xanax. Celebrity. Jeff Goldblum. Wait, so what is this? A celebrity. You choose a celebrity? Yeah. Peter Dinklage. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh no. Why can't I- oh god, how long has this episode gone on for? Okay, hold on a second. What?